Hello everybody, this is Ed and welcome back to another... I'm just checking... Do we have sound? Do we have sound? Yes, we do. Okay, this <laughs> got distracted then. Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. As you can see, this... Well, one, uh, I don't know if you can see. Well, now you can see. I'm on top of the... Uh, the the bee the bee i don't know what to call this the bee room the bee house um and i am doing some renovation and i am well, more than just renovation i am upgrading it so you can see the framework on the other side that i just looked there we are making it a lot bigger and um i guess styling it a bit more like a greenhouse but the greenhouse all the greenhouses uh, photographs that I've seen, at least of modern ones, they are all made of, they all have metal frameworks, but you know what, I'm, I'm just going to use the, uh, the grey stones here, which one is it? Andesite? It's, I think it's andesite, it does matter, but um, yes, and I've got the wooden logs that's going to be like the internal framework of the building, I hope I don't pick up the seeds, nope, we're good, uh, so that way we can hang the beehives off of the uh, off the rafters kind of deal and I've removed the campfires from underneath the beehives the bee homes the bee boxes because one day I was walking around and I was he hearing a bee in pain and um I realized it was on fire I looked in and I saw it was cooking and I was like oh no poor little bee so uh, I ooh, fell into that. I didn't realize that bees could catch on fire. I guess, I think I've seen pictures of players doing it. Sorry, I'm just counting this. So it's 13. So halfway would be uh, seven blocks. There we go. So do we, I'm just thinking, do I want to have this like the one bit or, you know what, I'm just going to work this out. I'm going to try a few different things and um, keep talking because I don't want to bore you with the numbers here. Anyway, so yes, the bees were getting hurt, so I need to create some type of um, blockage area that will stop the bees from dropping into on top of the fire and hurting themselves, because we don't want the bees to, to hurt themselves. Um, okay, well, three by th uh, three spaces aren't working, so maybe two spaces, I don't know. I might have to extend this out a little bit to make it a bit bigger, so I can make it the 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 width put the panels in the width that i like any which way we have uh had some wild weather in new south wales very recently uh terrible storms and winds and all that kind of stuff a tree we lots of trees fell down around my area and um even one onto my neighbor's house and He's a very old gentleman, and unfortunately, yeah, a tree fell down on... Luckily, it was on the garage part of his house, and not the, any kind of living area. Otherwise, uh, it could have been much worse, but uh, yeah, poor guy had uh, a tree fall down on him. It wasn't a very big one, but it certainly did do some damage to his property. Um, mostly the, uh, the, the tiles uh, on his rooftop were, were smashed up. Um, I don't know if any tiles fell in on top of his car, and that would be... Imagine trying to explain that to the insurance agency. Well, I guess you could. It wouldn't be too difficult, explaining what happened in that case. But yeah, that happens after a very wild and wet weekend that we had. Uh, the wife and I, we ventured out to a record fair, and I, we spent too much money at this record fair, and we bought some things, and um, we're very happy with what we got. Uh... And it seems to me, I was thinking, oh, you know, there must be a record fair around Sydney once every couple of, you know, every month or so. From what all the research I've done, there's pretty much one every weekend if you're looking in the right spots. Um, though the one coming up this weekend, I think there's one really far away, like about a one and a half hours drive. And I don't want to go all the way out there, but I think there's one closer to home. But, um, yeah, from the amount of money that we spent last weekend at the at, at the record fair we went to, I doubt that we'll be going to this one again because um, <laughs> we can't really keep up spending that much amount of money. And it's usually the same people with the same stock anyway that are selling this stuff. <sighs> anyway, so, yes, trees falling down thanks to the wild weather around Sydney and a lot of New South Wales. We had a lot of flooding after all the horrible bushfires and all that, so... Hopefully um, they've all been put out. At least the vast majority of them will be put out by now. I'm not too sure. But I know some of them have been um, 
drenched with all the rain which is a good thing uh, though I must admit the following morning I was trying to leave for work and um, driving along in the car and I live in the suburbs and there's a lot of tiny roads in the suburbs obviously and you've got the main roads that lead out to the major highways that allow you to get to where you need to get to anyway so I was driving along and the main kind of I don't know I don't know the 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 one of the main roads through my suburb I was driving along it and you, this is the main road that you turn off onto a bigger road that turns off onto the big road that gets you to wherever you need to be and this road was filled with cars and I was thinking oh geez you know it's all it was bumper to bumper I hope he doesn't mind me using his uh using his stone cutter while he's there I don't think he minded and um it was absolutely packed oh no yeah I just want to see what I can trade with you uh, okay cool and um anyway so I knew that there was an absolute traffic jam down this one way so I, I took a slight detour and I started to go around and um, I got hit with traffic the other way too so a lot of people were using this detour as well and what ended up happening um, so we I finally got onto the main road that leads to the uh, the big road that leads out to the major highway area and it was blocked off and you couldn't see that there was no signs up anywhere no one was announcing that things had been blocked off and i was just like okay what's going on here and it took me about half an hour to get to that point where i could actually find out that everything was blocked off and as i say there were just hundreds of cars stuck at a standstill and it was a case of like you know the lights would turn green and no one could move anywhere so it was just a case of everyone just oh, look at all the you'll be able to see all the villagers coming out to the village square to talk you'll be able to see uh, as they hang around the bell i must admit i need to redo the design of the bell the bell hanger because i'm not very happy with it but um yes so by the time i'd spent about half an hour to 35 minutes they uh came to realizing that well the main road you use to get out of the suburbs completely blocked off no explanation nothing nothing telling us what's happening except for a slight I, mean, I, I don't even think there was a detour sign so everyone was shuttled off to this other part of the suburbs and it was like a tiny one-way road um not even no not a one it was a two-way road but it was an absolutely tiny road and as you can imagine hundreds of cars were packed up on this two-way road trying to get out onto the main road and we just couldn't and it came to the point i was just sitting in traffic for about uh, another 10 minutes and no cars were going and the main road must have been chock a block and so the only time we ever moved forwards was when a car decided just to turn around and oh, i didn't mean to drop down there to turn around and go back because um <laughs> i can't reach it because um the, the, just no one was moving forwards anyway and so i might head to the my bed because the sun must be going down because they always meet on oh, no, actually now i'm going to cut some more stone before i do that oh, actually the sun is still up so i might keep going until until the sun goes down i'm not too sure where the sun's at but yeah um it was futile it was a futile effort so i had to contact um where i was going and just said look sorry i can't get out i can't get to you deepest apologies it's just absolute chaos on the roads and it was true everywhere trees had fallen down people were just absolutely stuck and there was nothing you could do about it so i said um, I, I arranged to go in another day to work on another day so i had my monday off um and so yeah that was my monday morning it was an absolute nightmare uh, 40 minutes of stuck being in tra being stuck in traffic and then i turned around it took me five minutes to get home after why is any i don't know he's just standing there he's out the front of the house like he's listening in to hear what's going on what what's being spoken about him um but yeah stuck in traffic and then on the way back as i say it was five minutes and the road rage that people were having and i can hear the villager is around here i bet you see yep he's coming out this way because he used to sleep up here on my bed and now that i moved my bed he's still determined to sleep <laughs> in the space where my bed once was for some reason i don't know why dude you gotta this it's just not happening bro you got it no i'm sorry you got nothing to trade either come on down this way we'll make i'll make your bed soon i promise you'll just have to sleep in i'll build it next to this um storage area 
I forgot I got I cooked all my glass in here and I don't think it's gonna be enough, but you know what? I'm just gonna have to keep building and if, if I had to go mine some more grass or glass, grass, glass, grass, grass, glass, glass, sand. If I have to go get some more sand sorry, I had a mild stroke there. If I had to go get some more sand, I can get some more sand. Ah, <sighs> so yeah, so yeah, a bit of road rage coming back. People were so tense and i was like well if you're tense now and this is when i was getting back closer to home i was like if you're tense now wait for the other half an hour of being stuck in traffic but um what essentially happened was a car was there was a line of cars kind of stuck in front of a uh, in an intersection with what you're not supposed to do it's very illegal and um so he was beeping them the people in front to move forwards and they were already um kind of in the intersection and they couldn't go any more forwards and so they got ang angry and it's like well you shouldn't have gone through in the first place which is true i mean you've got to be very careful not to go through the traffic lights so he was blocking the way for other people and everyone was just so angry and it's like i mean even while i was waiting to um uh, waiting in line trying to get to work by this point i hadn't given up um my wife called me and she was stressed because she was late for an appointment and she was starting to get really angsty because she doesn't like being late and to the point where she was almost crying and I said look there's no point getting upset there's nothing you can do about it just be in the moment appreciate the moment that you have and just just remember to stay in the moment because the moment you start to think about being late and being worried about being late you're thinking about the future which you have no control over and you start to feel stressed and anxious and that doesn't help the situation or any situation the moment i started to feel like oh no i'm going to be late i had to immediately realize that i couldn't do anything about it i just had to keep level-headed and i well, and i was sitting in, in traffic for a good long time as i say 40 minutes all up so i just Long periods of that was just sitting there, not going anywhere. So I would just sit there and look at the sky. I would appreciate the clouds and the beautiful blue sky after having all the rain that we had, which I'm very thankful for because we did need it. Little bee, you need to... Looks like you're stuck there, little bee. Um, so, um, yeah, I was appreciating the blue, beautiful blue sky and I was... Um, what else was I doing? Just uh, noticing the clouds and I was watching all the the swaying of the trees in the wind and I was admiring the vibrant colors of the trees and I just sat in the moment and I made sure that I removed any anxiety or any fear or anything like that that was normally would have that I would be experiencing while running late and um, I'm very lucky because the people I work for on a Monday morning they're very nice people I make sure I surround myself with lovely nice people that are supportive um, so that way I can feel that I can be open and honest with them and they can be open and honest with me and that's the most important thing I think to make sure that you're honest and you just keep yourself open to ideas and I particularly like working Monday mornings so when I'm not working on Monday mornings I feel a little bit down unfortunately but that's okay I realized it just wasn't meant to be and I just let go of that now I'm gonna fill in the side here to see how we are gonna go actually oops i don't think i wanted to do that actually i don't know if i want it up that like that i don't think i do but i'll have a look down here to see how things look oh little bee what you doing up there it's so high up because i haven't put a roof on the on the thing that's okay i'm sure the bee will come back okay let's have a look at a three by three as opposed to a three by four and uh i must admit i prefer the three by three so i may have to remove those but let me I won't be so harsh and do anything just yet. I'll just leave it as it is. So other things that have happened recently. Our washing machine broke down, unfortunately. So I've been washing the clothes by hand. Um, and I can assure you with the amount of clothing I'm going through, uh, me and my wife, because I wash all our clothes, um, it's a lot of hard work doing these things by hand. And so you got to agitate them which is what a washing machine does you basically put the detergent in with the clothing and then the water the machine pumps in the water and then it spins around to agitate the clothing to help get the stains and the dirt and all the yucky stuff off of it so i've been using a trough and i've just been washing everything big loads by hand and shaking it and moving it about and making sure that it's um gets well and truly agitated i need some more cobblestone and um 
yes, it's it's a he it's a heavy job because when clothes get wet, especially if you have a lot of them, it's a lot of it's a bit of a workout for your arms. So um, um, while it was upsetting that the washing machine did break down, and I've opened it up, I opened it up and had a look, but all I could smell was smoke. So I'm guessing the motor burned out or something burned out, a transformer or a fuse or something like that. I have no idea. Um, but yes, uh, I could get upset the, the the fact that the washing machine broke. But then I realised that the moment I get to spend sorry, I keep hitting my mic. The moment I get to spend. Um, Washing things by hand really makes me appreciate how much appliances appliances help us today. So I didn't get upset. I enjoyed the moment that I could appreciate, learn to appreciate having um, the electrical appliances that do so much work for us. So while it is tiring and it does take a lot more time, I make sure I don't allow myself to be upset because of it because it's you know what it's a nice it's a humbling experience because I'm sure there are many many people around the world that have to wash things by hand and um dear me all this glass okay sorry um so yes the poor washing machine decided to give out but I'm sure we'll be getting a new one very very soon I hope so anyway if not I'm going to get some very nice strong arm muscles I think and what else happened um, recently? During the storm, we, we got a few um, skylights in our house and the, the, the way they work is we've got, you've got the main open uh, glass area in the roof that has like a bulb that allows the sun to come through. And then we have like a, a, a small dome. That's, I don't know, the size of a, of a, a little bit smaller than a pizza, I guess, as far as the, the, the circle size goes. And, um, we have possums in our roof as well, and the other day I woke up and I went to the pantry and I looked inside there where a skylight is, and the skylight head was on the on the ground and there was, oh my goodness, all the bees, was on the ground and there was dirt everywhere and there was muddy, um, muddy, I don't know what to call it, it was like slidey, sloshy bits all over the side of the, of the, cabinet door and there, were, there was this mud everywhere and I started to go throughout the house and there was mud in the bathroom and paw prints all in the bathroom and um what else and uh, there's this mess all over the place and then I went back to the cupboard and I saw that one of the glasses from the cupboard had been knocked down out of the cupboard and I started to put a few things together and I realized I, I peered in and I knew it before I even I looked in, and there, sitting, hiding at the back on the bottom shelf, was a an Australian, a ring-tailed possum. And these guys, they're not like American possums. They live in the trees, and they look a bit different um, compared to the American ground possums. And um, to be honest with you, uh, they're cute little things. They, 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 they are, even though they live in the house. So... It was a bit wet, but it was very sleepy and very scared, so I just left it there for a while um, while I figured what to do with it, and I, I told my wife about it, and she was at work, and she said, oh, wow, you know, we've got a possum in the house. I was like, yes, we've got a possum in the house. So we left it. I, so I left it there, and I figured I'll wait until my wife comes home before we try and move it, um, just in case it starts to get a bit rowdy. Not that it did. And um, it was just sitting there the entire day, and then um, come later in the evening, not before night, because uh, at night time they get very active, but just uh, in the evening, just before sunset, um, let's see, we gave it a bit of banana, and it munched down on the banana, so it must have been hungry, and then <laughs> the poor thing, it was so docile, but very scared, the poor little thing, so we put it in the cat cage, and... Um, that we had and took it back outside and put it back out, out in nature and it ran away um away from the house so maybe it had a bad um it, it just it had bad memories of falling through the the skylight it didn't want to live in the house anymore in between in, in our roof or well, not in the roof it's in between the our first floor and our second floor we've got like a foot and a half gap in between the two floors that the possums like to live in which makes it very difficult because it's not easy to get in between there if you're bigger anything bigger than a possum or a cat anyway so we let the possum go back out and um yeah and uh in case you're wondering what i'm doing i liked the look of the cobblestone around the bottom edge here so i'm just going to be putting cobblestone bricks uh blocks around the edge here 
instead of having the andesite or diorite or whatever it is. And um, so yes, that was that was our possum adventures. And um, yeah, the thing was so cute, a little little guy, these big beautiful brown eyes that would look up at you. And um, yeah, we we it was it. <laughs> We we're like, what? How do we move it? Is this like? I went onto websites, like you know, pest control websites, because they're the first ones that come up. That when you're dealing with like you know, wild animals in your house, and it showed pictures of these possums with like snarling faces and evil-looking eyes, and it's saying, be careful, these things are dangerous. They can bite you. So I put on leather gloves, thinking that this thing was ready to attack me the first time, first chance it gets. It was the most placid animal in the world and i said to my wife look i'm not gonna be threatening or scary to it not that you know uh, animals you can't reason with an animal obviously but i think an animal can pick up on the on the vibes that you give off anyway so we put it in the cat house and um in the cat carrier and put it back outside and uh with a bit of banana in case it was still hungry a bit more banana i should say but yes, yeah, so we get that was our possum ordeal. <laughs> Wasn't the first time a possum fell through, but that was certainly the first time a possum had gone through the entirety of the downstairs and upstairs area, including making a lot of mess uh, in the um, on the stairway, because we have a banister area. So it was probably s s sitting on this banister area. Actually, I know it was sitting on this banister area because the banister area was all shredded up with claw claw shreddings <laughs> and so yeah and also left a little bit of a mess out there so oh i need a and i didn't bring any dirt with me you know what? i'm just going to pinch a bit of dirt from here but yeah um yeah possums all wild animals lovely little things well actually not all wild animals i must admit if i met as much as i love tigers and lions and all of the feline animal all the female fem female <laughs> all the feline um animal kingdom if i met a lion in real life or a tiger in real life i think i would be a little bit intimidated by it but i'd certainly want to give it a little cuddle if it let me but i know that probably wouldn't be a smart thing to do yeah. so yes that was the, the wet and wild weekends that we had that's everything that happened so yeah i've just been busy i must admit i've been very busy with work and um my schedule has been all over the place and I've had to do a lot of rescheduling here and there because people have been busy or going away or coming back. So my usual schedule has just been absolutely through the roof and um, all over the place. So I haven't been able just to sit down and really do much. I haven't played any games or anything like that recently. So it's just nice to finally play some games now, which is good. Play some Minecraft. But um, oh dear, what a, gotta be careful not to waste the glass. I, yeah, I still don't think I'm going to have enough to be able to do this, but you know what, I'm just, I need to find a desert biome, I think that's my number one, so I, I can make a, a gold, um, make a gold shovel, not a gold shovel, a diamond shovel, and get a lot of diamond, a lot of diamond, get a lot of uh, sand, but I'd really like to enchant any diamond gear, so hence why I haven't got any leather, to make books so this is why i haven't made myself a craft uh, enchanting table yet so somehow i need to find leather and a lot of it and i know i can do it with fishing but i've been catching a lot of fish and not leather with my um fishing adventures so sorry i keep hitting the microphone i do apologize um so yeah i i don't know what i'm gonna do about it. i've got a whole heap of cows but i'm not particularly wanting to they're, they're mixed in with sheep and i don't want to hurt the poor cows so Somehow I've got to find leather without, without, oh, I'm thinking I'm going to find a lot of glass panes around here, but, um, yeah, I'm hopefully, I just need to find a way to get leather. If only we could get synthetic leather in the game, or if only we could use something else to cover the books. I don't know what else we could be using in this game, um, to cover books, but there we go. Put ourselves the door there. I still got to put the roof on top, but... You know what, it's looking good now, it's nice and large, I'll be able to put, I'm thinking how many, how many honey boxes I should put in here, bee boxes I should put in here, I think I should have six and alternating, but, um, I'll come, I'll, I'll work on that later, I'll figure that bit out later, where are you going, hello, are you going a bit too far away from home, come back here, hello, oh boy, it's really on an adventure, lassie, come back, not that the, I'd call a bee lassie, come on, over this way, there we go, 
Yeah, I mean, it feels a bit futile doing this because there's no roof and it could just easily fly away again. But I'm hoping if I can keep them together, it won't get into too much trouble. Can we? There we go. I gave it a... Oh, kitty. I knew I could hear a cat around here. I'm going to go get some fish and see if I can tame this cat. And uh, I don't know how many cats I've got around the place, but I've certainly got quite a few of them, that's for sure. I want to... Um unsit them all and get them to come all around together i might have enough to fill an entire house filled with cats a special cat boarding house i think I'm, i think that's what i need ah oh dear okay we've got our fish we've got plenty of cod that i can use to tame this cat if the cat's not too scared because it can be a bit difficult because they keep running away yep. okay let's see kitty is Oh, oh, there it is. Okay, a little bit scared, a little bit startled. They're very timid cats. Dogs, you meet a dog and they just run up to you, but cats, eh. They, you need, come on. No, okay, come on. You're the, you came to me, you silly Billy. Ah, oh, boy. So, we've got Valentine's Day coming up, and uh, the, the wife, she doesn't really like celebrating it all that much. You know, one time... Um, one Valentine's Day, we just decided to get fish and chips and a bottle of, of cheap champagne, cheap fizzy wine, sweet wine, and, um, that's all we wanted. She said that's all she wanted, so that's what we had, and it was a very nice home experience without any kind of, um, um, high expectations or anything like that, and we'd never really, we're not like that, we don't go to fancy four-star restaurants dressed in, in gear, we're very just kind of casual and take things as it comes as they come yay we got ourselves another cat and uh but this year we're going to our favorite italian restaurant because um well we both like eating there and they keep sending me discounts so <laughs> i'm not going to complain about that so um yeah we like there and they've got the absolute best pizza and pasta so it's usually very busy but you know what i think i'm gonna have to finish this off another day and get some more sand but thank you all for joining me everyone take care live long live well look after yourselves and each other goodbye